Hey, what is up guys? And today I want to talk about what units you guys should be focusing on building first as a new player to Epic 7. Now, as you guys know, resources in this game, especially in the early game, are quite limited and you definitely want to make sure you make the best out of these resources that you get. So you are going to want to prioritize certain units in the early game over others so you can get a good start to your account. So today I'm going to be talking about the five first units you guys are going to want to build and actually put your best gear on for your beginner accounts. So you can actually get a good start in this game and clear a lot of content with just a few amount of characters. After your Wyvern team is up and running though, there are going to be five units that I actually recommend that you actually build so you can actually get a good start in the game. And actually these units will be able to take you through a bunch of content in the game. So it just makes it so that you need less full sets of gear to actually progress through the game's PvE and be able to compete and actually get through a lot of the content. First and foremost though guys, especially once you first get started in Epic 7, you're going to want to first prioritize your Wyvern team. Now, Wyvern is very important because it'll help you farm all of the gear you need to actually equip all of your units. Now, for your Wyvern team, a very good Wyvern team that is very free-to-play friendly is the one you see on your screen here. We have Angelic Montmorency in the front. She is the tank that is free-to-play. She can be obtained from connections. You have Furious here, which is going to be your defense breaker, also available from connections. Uh, we also have Sigrid here, which is going to be available from the Hunt event, which you can get from the event event tab over here. Make sure you actually pick Sigurd first, she's very, very important. And then you also have Mui, a three-star unit, which is very easily accessible just by summoning on a couple of banners. Now, some of you guys might have Angelica instead of Angelic Montmorency as your tank in the front as your healer, which is fine. Just make sure you also build up Angelic Montmorency because she is such a good cleanser for actually pretty much everywhere where you need cleansing, which is going to be a lot of content, especially in the early game. Now, the first unit that I recommend building and gearing ASAP is going to be a Moonlight 5-star unit, which might be weird, but listen to me first, and that is going to be Spectre Tenebria. Now, Spectre Tenebria is actually available from the Moonlight Blessing, so any player in the game that starts can actually get her for free. You just have to choose her from a list of six ML 5-star units or Moonlight 5-star units, and she is the best on that list by far. She is the best in PvE and also PvP in the early, mid, and the super late game as well. So it is a no-brainer, you definitely want to choose this unit. She's very powerful in a lot of areas of content. Her S1 is super, super strong, it does a lot of damage. And Poison is very good in PvE because it will do damage based on the target's max health. And as you guys know in PvE, that the bosses have a lot of HP, so this will hit very, very hard. Also, her S2 makes it so that she becomes very tanky, she cannot get hit by random single target attacks. And she also has that attack and defense buff stacking, which will carry over in combat in the first few waves. So this will make her very, very powerful and also very tanky as well. You definitely want to build her. She is a must-have unit right now for both PvE and PvP. And as soon as you finish her quests and unlock her fully, just please max her out. She's super, super strong and she will carry you through a lot of content. She hits super hard and her poisons will make her hit even harder. And the fact that she can actually attack multiple enemies with her S1 makes her super powerful as well. Now, the second unit I recommend building, and honestly, you can actually pick her over Spectre Tenebria, is going to be Tamron. Now, the only reason why I have Spectre Tenebria higher than Tamron is because I personally find that having a solid damage dealing unit is a little bit more important, especially because Spectre Tenebria is a dark elemental unit, so she has no disadvantages against any element, which makes her very, very powerful as an all-around damage dealing unit. Now, Tamron, guys, she's super, super strong because she has basically everything you want in a Soul Weaver. She has cleansing, she has healing, she has an attack buff, she has combat readiness push, she has an AoE dispel, which is insane, she has a dual attack, which will make it so that she can actually deal pretty significant damage on her turns as well. And she's just super powerful, you'll use her in a lot of content, and the way you get her is going to be from the Side Story Summon. Now, Side Story Summon, guys, like, this is going to be super easy to actually Activate. All you guys have to do is play through Tamron's side story and then choose her banner and then as you can see She's very very good in a lot of content here And you definitely want to make sure you have enough to pity her in case you reach the pity which is going to be 605 covenant bookmarks She's definitely the first banner I recommend everyone to pull for because she is super super powerful And you can pretty much take her into every single PvE team for the most part and she will get the job done Next unit that I would recommend is Adventure Ross, the main character. Now, Ross in the base form before you specialty change him is pretty terrible, not gonna lie. But once you finish his specialty change after beating episode 2, 
he becomes the GOAT. He is an amazing tank. He has a defense buff for your team, which makes your team super, super tanky. He has a dual attack. This dual attack can also apply defense break. It's just not listed here. You can see in one of the rooms here in his skill tree that you'll see that you have a 60% chance to decrease defense of the target for one turn when using Command Strike, which is his S2. Now, this is very good because Command Strike will actually trigger a dual attack from the ally with the highest attack. So if you actually land that defense break and one of your teammates um, actually attacks that enemy with that dual attack, it will do a lot of damage. You can always soul burn this to reduce the cooldown to one turn, which basically means that there is no cooldown and it only costs 10 souls. Adventure Ross is also very good because his S1 has a built-in dispel, which will make him very good in fights where you need a consistent dispeller such as Asmanac, Hunt, and also Raid. Now, Adventure Ross, guys, definitely a unit you definitely want to build. If you do 6-star him before his specialty change, everything will carry over, so don't feel like you're wasting anything by building him early. Just keep in mind that before he gets specialty change, guys, he's pretty weak because basically all of his benefits will come from that skill tree and after you actually activate that specialty change. So after Adventure Ross, guys, the next unit I recommend building is going to be Asaria. Now, Asaria is a very strong utility support unit because of the fact that she has a ton of defense breaks or decreased defenses in her S3 and also her S1. And she also has a full dispel, which becomes very, very in handy against bosses which have a lot of buffs. And she can also apply cannot buff or unable to be buffed, which makes it even better because bosses can't reapply those buffs to themselves. Now, her S2 is going to be one of her most powerful skills. It is going to reset the skill cooldown of an ally and also grants herself an extra turn, which will actually make it so that the cooldown of her S3 is actually only going to be three turns, which is pretty amazing. And the reason why this S2 is so great is because if you pair this with Tamarin, you can actually reset the cooldown of Tamarin's S3, which makes it so that if you actually make it so that Assyria takes her turn before Tamarin, you can actually make it so that Tamarin's S3 starts off of cooldown, which will make Tamarin even more stronger than she already is because her main strength actually comes from her idle form. Definitely a must-have unit, and the best part is because she's not a main damage dealer, you can keep her at 5 stars, so there's not much investment going on. And I definitely recommend at least getting her to level 50, fully awakened, with some gear on her, and reduce the cooldown of her S2 and S3, and she becomes a super, super strong unit paired with Tamarin. Last unit, guys, that I recommend building is going to be Free Spirit Terraria. Now, Free Spirit Terraria, you get to 5 stars for free, and she is a very, very powerful unit because of her AoE clear. She becomes a very, very good adventure mode and side story farmer because her S2 will reset when it kills an enemy, and if you put her on the best gear that you have, she will take the first turn, one shot the first wave, go to the second wave, take the first turn again, one shot the second wave, and as you can see, she becomes a very, very good farmer and will save you a lot of time. Free Spirit Tyria is also going to be used in the late game as a hunt one-shot unit for her S3 defense break and also for some AoE damage, which makes her a very solid investment because of the fact that in the early game, you can use her as a farmer and a defense breaker, and in the late game, you can use her in hunts when you need to speed up your account progression and want to get into start one-shotting hunts. Just to summarize, guys, I highly recommend building these units especially after your Wyvern team is done at the top of your screen here. Adventure Ross, Spectre Teneria, Tamarin, Free Spirit Teneria, and Asaria. Honestly, in no real order, they're all very good to build, but I would personally prioritize Spectre Teneria, then Tamarin, then Adventure Ross, then Asaria, and then Free Spirit Teneria. They're all very good. You can always use them in the early, in the mid, in the late game. They'll always be usable no matter how far along your account gets, which makes them very good investments, and they're so so good at what they do and you can use them in so many areas of content which makes them very valuable because you do not have to spread your gear as much which is very very important in the early game hope this video helped you guys out guys and i will see you guys next time